Thank you for joining us on this week's message. We're so honored and excited to be a part of what God is doing through you and for your life. We believe that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And here at DTC, we have a plan to help you discover your purpose and unlock your potential. You can visit dtcchurch.com, click on connect to find ways to help you on your journey. Also, if you've been impacted by this message and would like to get behind what God is doing through DTC Church, you can give on our website or text DTCC to 77977. God bless and enjoy this message. Again, thank you guys so much for, for being here with us this afternoon. Always believe that starting off your week in the house of God is the best way to do that. And especially here as we are in the beginning of a new year. It's the, it, it's the beginning of something new, the beginning of a new season in your life. And, and so we're just believing that this is going to be your best year yet. And, uh, and I encourage you to have faith in that, that, you know, things may have not gone so well in 2018, but this is a new day. This is a new beginning. And God is about to break through some things in your life. I believe that for us this year. You know, that's what, that's what I have in my spirit, that, that this is a year of breakthrough. A year of breakthrough, that things that maybe haven't changed, things that you've been believing for, things you've been hoping for, that this is a year you're going to see those breakthroughs come to pass. Amen. Amen. So we just finished a, a little 14 days of prayer and fasting. And I know some of you guys uh, waited uh, to eat last night at midnight. You can go to sleep so you could eat. And then I know others of you are glad the fast is over so that you can eat guilt free. You ever notice that when your church is fasting and, and you're not quite fasting along with it, but you kind of feel a little guilty when you eat, so you don't kind of enjoy the meal as much as you like? And some of you have been here the last two weeks, and you're like, we're fasting? Yes, we were. But anyhow, the reason we do that, again, we like to start off the year with fasting and prayers because, one, Jesus told us to fast. He told us to fast as a way to, to make a stronger connection with him. And also as a way to receive guidance and direction for our life. And so, you know, being a person of prayer is, is, is vital to, to, for us to have the strength that we need for life and, and for us to, to be guided by God's hand into the things that lie ahead. And so we finished that off last night. And, and uh, one of the readings that we had, of course, we had uh, readings every day. Uh, we had a real reading plan that we encourage you to read along with. And one of the chapters that we talked to or we read was Nehemiah uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2. How many of y'all had a chance to read that? Good, we got, we got some people. And in case you didn't, I encourage you to read that a little later today. Nehemiah chapter 1 and, and, and chapter 2. Uh, but I want to talk to you about Nehemiah a little bit. I want to talk to you about Nehemiah a little bit today and then a, a little bit more over the next couple weeks. But the, the story of Nehemiah is very interesting because Nehemiah, the scripture says that, that he was a, he was a cupbearer to the king. Now, what that meant back in those days is that basically to everyone else, specifically to the king, uh, Nehemiah wasn't a very significant purpose, a person. Uh, he had no meaning, you know, he was somebody that, that they, you know, they said, hey, you know what, just use Nehemiah. And the reason for that is because the role of a cupbearer in those days was he was there to basically protect the king. And so before the king would consume any wine or any drink or water, the cupbearer first had to take some of it first. And then the king would wait to see if nothing would happen. And if he didn't drop dead, then he would drink the cup. And so the cupbearer was somebody that was disposable, if you will, you know. But, but Nehemiah, although in the eyes of other people he was insignificant, he felt he understood who he was in God. And he understood that he worshipped and served a, a bigger God. See, he believed in the same God that you and I be, believe in today. And so Nehemiah was a, uh, was, a, was a Jewish person that was living in Persia at the time. But in Nehemiah's heart, he was thinking about his friends, his family, the people of God that still lived in Jerusalem. And he had a heart for the city of Jerusalem. And so one day, some men come into town 
from Jerusalem, and, and he cannot wait to ask them. And he comes to them, and he says, hey, he says, How, how's everything going back home? What's going on with the people of God? What's going on with the city of Jerusalem? And unfortunately, they give him some bad news, and they say, it's not good. Things are not going very well for the people of God. They're in trouble, and the city is in ruins. The walls have been broken down. They're burned up, and the city is exposed to any enemy that wants to come. And the Bible says that Nehemiah wept. And he cried for the city, and he cried for the people of God, and he got into a time of prayer, and, and he began to fast, and, and he began to call upon the God of heaven, the same God that you and I pray to. And he called upon the God of heaven, and he said, God, he says, I see my city and, and the people, they're hurting, they're in trouble, they're broken. But Lord, I believe that you can use my life to do something about it. And so he asked God, God, use my life. Help me to go over there and to help the people that are in trouble and to rebuild the walls so that the city can once again bring pride and glory to your name and so that the people of God can be rescued from this trouble that they are in. But again, remember, Nehemiah, is a cupbearer. He doesn't have any influence. He's not wealthy. He's not a leader. He is somebody else's servant. But he does not let that stop him because he believes in the God of the maker of heaven and earth. And so he prays to God. And then he goes and he talks to his king. And he says, he asks his king if he will let him go back to his hometown to help to rebuild the walls. And then he goes a step further, and he says, will you also help me? Will you give me some of the wealth that you have? Will you help me to get resources? Will you help me to get wood? Will you help me to, would you help open up some doors for me so that I can go back and help my people, so I can go back and rebuild the walls? And the king says yes, and he helps him, and he lets him go. And Nehemiah goes to his city, and for three days, he walks around the city to see how bad it is. And then he finally begins to talk to the people, to other believers, believers like you and I. And he begins to share with them a vision. He says, hey, guys, our city's in trouble. The people are, are in trouble. The city's in ruin, but we can do something about it. We can rebuild the walls. If we all come together, if we all work, if we all do our part, we can, be re we can rebuild the walls and we can bring glory to the name of God once again and our city can be safe. And so they receive it and they said yes. And he says to them, and I know that if we do this together, God will be with us. And so the scripture goes on to say that, that together they're able to rebuild the walls again. And I was thinking about that this week and how God used a man like Nehemiah, an ordinary person, to, to make a difference in the world, to leave a, leave a legacy that today you and I are talking about it. Because just like Nehemiah, you and I can be world changers. You and I can be those difference makers. You and I can be those people that do something that outlives us, that we do something that is greater and bigger than ourselves. And as I was reading through that this week, I, I, I got to thinking about how, as a church, you know, our vision, the passion of DTC has always been to, to reach as many people as we can here in the Rio Grande Valley and help them to become followers of Christ. Why, my friends? Because just like Nehemiah, there is a group of people here in the Rio Grande Valley who are hurting, who are in trouble who are broken, who are disconnected from a relationship with God. But just like Nehemiah, we can do something about it. And so over the last several years, we've been trying our best to, to carry out that, that vision, to, to help marriages, to help families, to help people find their way back to God, to help people that are lost to be found, to help the people that are broken to be made whole once again. When we moved into this building, we only had about 60 people in our congregation. And it was a big step of faith purchasing this property at the time. But we, we, we did it because we believed 
that God wanted to help people that were in trouble, that God wanted to help people that were disconnected from God, that he wanted to help more people to find their purpose, God's plan and destiny for their life. And so although it was a big step of faith, and although we didn't know how it was all going to come together, God has honored that because our church grew from about 60 people to over 1,000 people in just a matter of years. And what happened? God helped us to reach those people in the world, people that could get closer to God. And so over the last, you know, couple years, you know, we've kind of outgrown this space. And we've been looking and saying, asking God, Lord, help us to find our new property. Help us to find a new location so that we can continue to do what you've called us to do. And so last year, as I've shared with you, we found a property and we began to work on it. We made an offer and we worked on a deal and and we finally were able to close on that property on November 2nd, just a couple months ago. And so over the last couple months, over the last three months, we've been working on the design part of our church and we've been designing it and working on all the details on how it's going to look, how it's going to look and how it's going to function and how we can utilize this space that maybe was once a place of darkness and it will now be a beacon of light. How we can use this place to help more young and old people find God's plan and purpose for their life. And so I wanna show you a a video here today of what we've been working on. And again, this is uh, on the design part of our church. We're about 60, 70% complete. Uh, But I want to show you this video of of what we intend and what we're doing with the property that we have purchased. And uh, so you get an idea of the direction that we are going in. And so take a look.
So I showed it, uh, we shared this in the first service and, um, and, and they didn't respond whatsoever throughout the video. And I said, I said either they're speechless or they don't like it. Uh, but how do y'all like, how do y'all like the direction we're moving in? <laughs> awesome. Well, again, like I said, we're about 70% finished with the design, and, 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 and th again, that video didn't show all the parts of the church, but, but it, but it kind of gives us a direction or a glimpse of, of what, what we've done so far, and so uh, we're excited about it. Again, you know, this, uh, you know, over the last couple years, what we did uh, to help us to move forward is we launched what we call the Together uh, Project. And, and, and with that, we were able to raise some money. We used that Together Project to raise some money to help us to purchase the building that we now have. And so we have the property. And, uh, and so in this new property, we are going to have a brand new 1,200-seat worship auditorium, <laughs> uh, a large platform for worship and production, state-of-the-art sound and lighting equipment, a, lo a large lobby area with cafe and lots of places uh, for you to be able to connect with your family, with friends, a place that we believe the community is going to want to come to. Uh, of course, there's going to be plenty of restrooms as well. <laughs> Handicap accessibility throughout the entire facility going to have large uh, kids classrooms for our DTC kids. We're going to have designated areas for our youth and all the different uh, middle school and elementary kids on all kinds of uh, multifunction rooms to be able to utilize to hold groups and different events. And, and on the outside, you know, a nice parking lot to, that will help to just with the flow of traffic, plenty of parking, parking spaces. And then also, of course, we want to make it uh, really nice and landscaping, a lot of greenery, a lot of nice flowers, uh, because we want it to represent well. And I believe that, that it's going to be a place that's going to catch the attention of our community and that people are going to want to come and see what's going on <laughs> in this place. And so this new location is going to give us the potential uh, to reach uh, at least 1,500 people if we were to have one service. If we have two services, it's going to give us the potential to reach 3,000 people. And if we have three services, it will give us the opportunity to reach up to close or close to 5,000 people. <laughs> you know, before Jesus left this earth, he talked to the disciples and he talked to the believers. And he said, he said to them, listen, he says, while I was here, I was doing this work. He says, but now that I'm leaving, he says, I need you to carry it on. I need you to be my hands. I need you to be my feet. I need you to have my heart. And this is what he told them. This is what is called the Great Commission, and it's found in Matthew chapter 28. And this is what he said to them. He said, therefore, go. In other words, go and share the good news of Christ with others. And he says, and make disciples of all nations. That word nations means peoples. He says, make disciples of all the people. He says, and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then he said, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Yeah. And so this was the, the heart of Christ. This is what he commissioned us. He's, he left and he says, I'm going to raise up a generation of people. I'm going to raise up new believers and they're going to carry this in their heart. And they're going to be my hands. And they're going to be my feet. And they're going to have my heart. And so that's what this is about. And so although, you know, we're going to have a bigger facility, even going into it, we will not just have one service. We will have multiple services. Because it gives us the opportunity. It gives people the opportunity to, to select the service that works with their schedule. And it also gives the body of Christ, the people of God, the opportunity to serve to use their talents, to use their gifts, to use their ability to serve the things of God. And so, and so we're excited about the opportunity that God has opened up for us to, to continue to carry out His work, to continue to, to reach families, to reach the next generation, and to build people up. And so the way we're going to move forward is we're going to launch, starting next month, what we call the Together Project Phase 2. With the Together Project Phase 2, our goal 
is to raise $1.7 million to help with the overall cost of the renovation of our new building. Now, before you start backtracking, like uh, Homer Simpson here, I know that big numbers can sometimes scare people, but we believe that if God has opened up this door for us, that God has a plan to make the provisions that we need to move into this property. And so what I'm asking us to do as a church is to pray, is to continue to pray and ask for God's hand to be with us, just like Nehemiah, to pray to the God of heaven, to give us favor, to open up doors, to bring the resources that we need, and also to ask God, what can we do? God, what part do you want me to play? As you know, when Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago, it was a big sacrifice. He made a sacrifice to ultimately die on a cross so that people like you and I could have life and so that we could have eternal life. And so I want to I ask us to pray, to pray about a gift from the heart. What, I want you to pray and ask God, God, what would you have me contribute to what we're going to do as a church? How would you like for me and my family to be a part of, of building this new project and, about, and being a part of leaving a legacy that can never be erased here in the valley? And so that's going to be my, my ask of all of us. Over the next three weeks, I want you to pray. Because come February 17th, we're going to have what we call a launch party happening here during our services. And in that service, we're all going to come together and we're going we're gonna to bring, in a sense, what we've prayed about and our commitment from God. And so I, wanna, I, want you, I want to ask you to pray about an amount, a financial amount, that God would play it in your, place in your heart to give to this Together f uh, Project Phase 2. And it, it, it'll look something like this. And so let me give you uh, a couple examples. And so let me say, let's say if... I want you to pray. This is the key thing. I want you to pray about it because I believe that God, if you pray sincerely from your heart, that God will put an amount in your heart that he wants you to give as a family. Now, as a church, we have about a, a thousand members in our church. Now, let me, let's say that 700 families or 700 members would decide to give a thousand, an extra thousand dollars every year for the next three years. That is a total of $3,000 over a three-year period because that's going to be the length of our project. Not, not the renovation. Our hope is to move into the property before the end of this year, but to raise the money, we're going to give ourselves three years to raise it. And so let's say we have 700 families that commit to say, I will give an extra 1000 per year for the next three years. For the next three years, that's $3,000. If you multiply that 3000 times 700 families, that is $2.1 million. That is more than enough to help us to get the renovation project done. And so when you think about $1,000 over a year, that equals out to $19 per week. And so if we were to sacrifice an extra $19 per week, as an example, we could, we could achieve, or we could move forward with this project. Now here's some other examples that I have for you. Um, letter A here. And so, Jessica, are you here today? This one's for you. Jessica has, I'm playing, I'm playing, don't raise your hand. Jessica has chosen, let's say Jessica has chosen to give an amount, she's prayed and, and she's felt the Lord place in her heart to give an amount of $6,500 total amount to the, to the project over the next three years. And her first gift that she's going to bring to the launch party, the first day that we launched this on February 17th, she has decided she wants to give $1,000 of the $6,500. That means that over the next three years, Jessica can fulfill that pledge either by giving $35 a week, $71 every two weeks, or $150 every month. Now let's say Joe and Cindy. Joe and Cindy got together and they prayed and, and they felt the Lord put the number 5,000 on their heart. But they've decided that they want to give it all at one time. And so they'll be able to do that. Let's say Alex. Alex, are you here today? Alex, again, has chosen to give $3,000. We try to pick Hispanic names so that everybody pick it up. Just like. I said, just said, the Garcia family, the Garza family decided. No, I'm just like. 
And so, so let's say Alex decides to give $3,000 for the ne- over the next three years. This is his goal. Again, for Alex, that would mean that he's going to give $1,000 during one year period for three years. And again, that breaks down to about $20 every week. Again, these are just some examples I'm sharing with you. But the goal is I want us all to pray. There's no pressure here. The Bible says that God does not want us to give under compulsion, under pressure. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, that it comes from a willing heart, that it comes from a heart that says, Lord, I want to, not I have to. And so I want you to pray about it. Pray as a family and see what the Lord would place in your heart. Now, I want you to take a a pledge card home with you. On the back of the seats in front of you, there is a pledge card. And, and, And I want you to take that home with you. And I want you to pray about what the Lord would have you give. And once the Lord places this in your heart, once he places the amount in your heart, I want you to place that number right here in the bottom. Again, this is for a three-year mark. Now, here's the deal. I want you to pray and have faith because the Bible says that faith pleases God, that God can move mountains with a little bit of faith. And what I've learned with God is that if you're willing to have faith, If you're willing to hear what God is saying, God is able to supply the need that you have in order to meet the goal that you have placed for yourself. And so so have have some faith when you sit down and you make your commitment together. And so once you fill out the pledge card, you'll be able on February 17th, we will all bring these back together with our first time gift. And we're going to bring them before the Lord. We're going to pray over our gifts. We're going to pray over our commitments. We're going to pray over the project. And we're going to see God do some mighty things. Now, here's the thing that we've learned about God. All throughout the scripture, God does big things. God can do big things with small acts of sacrifice. Throughout the scripture, I think about how the scripture describes how one day, There was over 5,000 people that had gathered with Christ. And Jesus told the men, guys, let's feed them. The people are hungry. And the guys looked at Jesus and said, Lord, there's no way we can feed this many people. There's too many. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough food to feed them all. He says, go and see what you can find. Right around that time, there was a young boy that came to them and said, here, he goes, all I have is five loaves and two fish but I'd be more than glad to give it to the Lord. And so he brought it to the Lord. And the Lord multiplied that five loaves and two fish, and they were able to feed over 5,000 people. (laughs) What does that mean, my friends? God can do big things with small acts of sacrifice. And so don't ever think that your your, your sacrifice is too small. And so I want to encourage you again to think about it. You know, think about where we spend money. You know, if you're a big coffee drinker, maybe you spend $25 a week on coffee. That's about $100 a month. Or maybe you eat out pretty often. How many of you realize that eating out is pretty expensive these days? You know, there's there's all types of places where we, we spend money. Maybe there's some places where you can sacrifice a little bit so that you can contribute and so you can be a part of something that is bigger than yourself. Again, my prayer and my hope is that all of us would pray. And that we would pray in faith and then that we would trust God to supply us the need so that we can meet the commitment that we make. Come on, how many of you guys are with me? You see, this is, this is what I know, my friends. I know that, that one person can, can, might be able to do something, might be able to make a difference. Two people working together might be able to, to make a difference. But I know that a congregation as big as the size of the one that we have, that when we come together, we can make a greater difference because we are stronger together. We're stronger together. And so I I want you to do something for me. If you'll stand to your feet, I just want us to pray over this project. And as we move forward with this uh, renovation, we just want to ask for God's blessing to be with us. And so, Father, we come before you. Uh, As a matter of fact, hold, hold hands with somebody next to you or lock arms with your neighbor there, and let's pray. So, Father, we come before you this afternoon, and, and Lord, we thank you first and foremost for opening up this, this new door uh, for our church, Lord God. And Lord, we believe by faith that is, if you've opened up this door for us, then you already have plans to provide 
for what lies ahead. And so we come together as a church, and we believe, Father God, that we are stronger together. And so we pray, Father, that you would place uh, uh, amounts, that you would place in our heart what it is that you would want us to contribute and how you would want us to be a part of what you're about to do. Give us your hand of blessing, your hand of favor, and help us to accomplish the will and the task that you have set before us. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.